So you want to be successful? Nothing wrong with that. But what you've got to understand is that you can't just do what you believe in. Those days are over. That's why you need me. You want to be famous? You want to be on MTV? Well, you've got to learn to think of yourselves as a product. Think of yourselves as shampoo. Who would want to buy you? Get direct internet access with the Compact Presario 5700 series. Contains the Intel Pentium 3 processor. I'm Shirley Benson. I own the flat upstairs. I wrote to you a few weeks ago. Oh, yes? About the noise. Oh, I remember. That's taken care of. What do you mean, taken care of? Well, I spoke to the tenant, warned him you'd complained. He assured me he'd be more considerate. He lied. There's more noise now than ever. It's much better if you sort it out between yourselves. But you're his landlord. Then the best thing is to keep a diary. Sorry? A diary? Dates? Times of incidents? Duration? That sort of thing? Well, no, Look, no, I can't I do anything without specific allegations, now can I? Keep it for a few weeks. Wait. And when you've got something specific, drop me a line, OK? Now, if you'll excuse me. Should you have sailed that night with one member of the crew on board, whom we have been told by your chief engineer was very drunk? Give him some kind of answer. This is an inquest, sir, not a farce. Either he gives an answer or he doesn't. With respect, you can't instruct him to give some kind of answer. Well, should you have sailed if the cook is drunk? Well, I've seen no regulations to say that uh, you should not sail. So, there are no company orders to that effect. I, I think that is the implication of your answer, is that right? He says if there are, he has not seen them. What about Mr Blaney? Is he completely fit for duty? <laughs> I don't get to dine out very much these days. Two cups of tea, please. Uh, what about a sticky bun, Rita? Uh, no, thanks. Sir. I was wondering if you'd heard of anybody doing a number on me. Put in your chain. Bit of a chancer, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Not at all. I haven't heard. Mm -hmm. What about Rollo? I'll ask him. Right. One ninety. What, for a cuppa? For a mug. You disgusting little creature! Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean you, of course. I meant that uh, black pigeon up there. Raven. Yes, he is a bit. I don't recognise you two. New faces, eh? No, we've always had these ones. Well, I want you to know we're in a state of high alert. Daring Derrick's around. Around what? He's a notorious robber, famed for his ridiculous disguises. And he's planning to steal the Crown Jewel. I see. And you want us to guard them for you? Now, there's a thought. You two guarding the jewels. <laughs> <laughs> no, you two keep well clear of them. I want you two to look after the ravens. You know what they say? When the last raven flies from the tower walls, buildings tumble and the kingdom falls. If the ravens ever left, it would be disaster for Britain. And we don't want that, do we? We do not. Now, to your duties. Dis Miss! <laughs> I've looked over the material you sent me. And what do you think? You're not going to like it. Her statement is completely self-justificatory. She did it, she admits doing it. Why should she be treated differently to any other murderer? But that's ridiculous. You know uh, that she... Surely there's something we could use. Well, there might be one thing. Follow up on the prison psychiatrist's report. He saw her shortly after the incident, just before the trial, and he mentions endogenous depression. Do you mean we have to say she's crazy? Right, thank you, Doctor. You've been a great help. <gasps> What world is this? Where a woman has to lose her marbles to get justice and a man just has to lose his temper? Um, I'm so sorry, Doctor. Thank you again. We are leaving. <laughs>